Hello everyone, my name is Brian Pagano. I'm Lead Digital Success here at Apogee. Uh, and I'm Ed Anoff, I'm the Head of Product Strategy at Apogee. So today we're going to talk about this idea of an API tier, which is something that you're now hearing architects, software developers, people who are, are building APIs and applications on top of them, they start talking about saying, oh, that, that'll sit in the API tier. And so now that this has kind of entered the parlance, you have a lot of people going and saying, well, wait a minute, uh, how many tiers are there in my architecture? Is there now an API tier? I thought that we were doing, you know, three tier, four tier. Now we've got a five tier architecture, I guess, if you include the API tier. What does that mean? Trail of tiers. It is exactly the trail of tiers. So, so I think what we're well going to do in this quick session is we're just going to look at some of the the major historical types of architecture that got us to this point of the modern API architecture. APIs almost always uh, exist in the service of an application architecture. And so if you want to understand where do APIs sit within your overall enterprise architecture, it really makes sense to start with the lens of how are your applications being built right now. And for a lot of them, that is this monolithic app server architecture. Okay, so the first, the first type of architecture generally encountered would be the monolithic app structure. Yep. Okay. Yep. And so what's what's the next level? Well, so I think that what we've seen has been sort of the, the that we started to see some cracks in that that started to happen in, in a lot of things that were popularized in Web 2.0 where people were moving more functionality out of the server side to the client side, mm -hmm. uh, doing things within JavaScript in the browser. Yep. That started to require you to actually expose some APIs to feed that. Mm. And I don't think people fully appreciated at the time that that was actually what was the catalyst for this, but it was a piece of it. And then that idea that you could go and have um, you know, mobile apps and the whole idea of third-party apps and so on also started to go and, and widen that up. But a lot of the API action that you saw, particularly out in the consumer internet, starting from around you know, say 2005 and 2010, really sort of the whole age of the Twitter popularization of APIs, everything needed to have APIs, that was really just about exposing things that were sitting in that monolithic app that previously you could only get to through the UI tier. Now you could get to them programmatically through an API tier. Right on. So we went from monolithic to kind of a an exposure-based architecture. And then the third third type of architecture is what? So the next phase of architecture is really going from uh, the standpoint of exposing these APIs as application functionality for new forms of clients. And I think this really kind of came about when the enterprises got into the game that had a full robust uh, service architecture. Yep. They started to say, well, you know what, I actually want to sort of bypass these specific applications. And what I want is a way of taking the same services that my app servers are sitting on top of and exposing those out as APIs in some sort of safe, secure way. And this is where you started to see APIs that really weren't bound to a specific application instance were now also being exposed. And in those situations, that's really actually, I think, where sort of this modern conundrum of saying, where do my APIs sit in relation to my ESBs comes about? Because that's where, rather than bolting the API tier on the side of the app server, now it's, it's sort of looking at saying, um, I've got the CSB and maybe it has some SOAP APIs and it has, doesn't have proper uh, authentication mechanisms for external uh, clients and so on and it can't handle web scale. But I somehow want to get those same services exposed in a web safe way. So we went from monolithic to exposure to the web to a slightly decoupled but very service focused I would even say a little bit internal focused, in, yeah. inside out focused architecture, which finally brings us up to the modern right. architecture, which is what? So the way that we're seeing a lot of enterprises and uh, a lot of internet companies approaching this is to actually go and see this clear delineation between what it is that they might be doing from their internal services. But now there's this idea that APIs are something that sit above that that might be curated from those set of services, that might be assembled out of those mm -hmm. services, uh, that might be customized by the application developers for specific use cases. Definitely the app developers have refuted the idea that you can have one form of perfect abstract service that's going to meet all types of the use cases. There's just too many interaction dynamics that 
can't be supported by those types of principles. And so now you need this API tier that really sort of delineates between those things. And that's, that's what people are talking about is this API tier. I see. So it's really, it's not just a bolt-on to the previous architecture. As we've seen from all of them, none of them are just a bolt-on yeah. to the previous architecture. It really is a, a mind shift in the way you're architecting. It's thinking outside in. Yep. It's thinking about applications. It's thinking about the needs of people beyond certain trust boundaries, yep. whether that's your line of business or a partner or a third party, which is a very different way of thinking about exposure and consumption.